want to welcome you to Living Life. You know, one of the humble feelings we might have is to think that the Word of God that we're looking at today in this Living Life devotional, that it's going to be alive a lot longer than we are, right? I mean, I'm going to be gone, but the Word of God remains. And I think about that because I have some kids, and now I've got some grandkids, and maybe in the future there'll be some great grandkids. And just thinking that when I'm gone, though, they're still going to have like this chapter, Job chapter 25, the shortest chapter in this great book we call Job. And Job is just part of this great drama of redemption that God gives us from Genesis to Revelation, how he's delivering his people and how we can have a life with him found through Jesus Christ. And so my relatives, my children, they get to have this word of God even after I'm gone. And I hope that they will handle accurately the word of truth and that they'll read it and study it and think about it. And, you know, as we come to this chapter, I wonder what they'll be thinking when they read verse 4 because it says, How then can a mortal be righteous before God? I mean, that's like the all-important question. And hopefully there's an answer. And we know that there is. But we're going to now have it said to us as we now turn to God's holy word. So let's now have ears to hear as the scriptures are read for us at this time. Job chapter 25 verses 1 through 6 Then Bildad the Shuhite replied, Dominion and awe belong to God. He establishes order in the heights of heaven. Can his forces be numbered? On whom does his light not rise? How then can a mortal be righteous before God? How can one born of woman be pure? If even the moon is not bright and the stars are not pure in his eyes, how much less a mortal who is but a maggot, a human being who is only a worm? So what we have here in Job chapter 25 is the last of the speeches that the friends are bringing to Job. And they're trying to help Job make sense out of all of his sufferings. And Bildad, we just know that he is just a little too simple in his thoughts. And he's limited in his perspective. And he says to Job, basically, look, God has people suffer because they have been wicked. And if you're really wicked, then you're really going to suffer and experience his punishment. And Job, I mean, we look at what you've had to go through and you really have suffered. So you must really have sin in your life. But of course, Job has been proclaiming his innocence. But Bildad brings his thoughts to Job. And he does so say something that's quite interesting in verse 2. He says, dominion and awe belong to God. Well, that's actually very true, right? I mean, it's not like God has to ask permission. I mean, he is Lord of all and he has full rule and reign over everything. And then uh, Bildad goes on to say that God establishes order in the heights of heaven. And so, yes, there is order to all of this. There's not chaos. God's not doubting what he's been doing. He doesn't wonder if his plans are right or wrong. I mean, God is in control, and Bildad is letting Job know this. And Job would agree with that, but he doesn't like some of the conclusions that Bildad is bringing to him. And I just think, you know, back to this idea that the Word of God is going to last a lot longer than me, right? I'm going to be long gone, but my family, my kids, my grandkids, my great-grandkids, 
they're going to be alive and I want them to trust in the promises of God and I want them to know about you know grandpa or great grandpa's faith and that they would have the assurance that grandpa is with the Lord that he's with the all wise Lord that he's with the gracious Lord he's with the sovereign Lord and so that brings me comfort that I can have a life with God and that I can help my kids and grandkids have a life with God as well as I point them to Jesus now in verse 3 Bildad goes on to say some good things he says can his forces be numbered I mean can we number the armies of angels that God has I mean he's the Lord of hosts there's just a whole lot out there that God is in control of and then he goes on to say on whom does God's light not rise well that is actually important for us to realize that there's like no blind spot with God I mean he sees everything and again we should take comfort in knowing that that's true but he sees our thoughts our attitudes our actions and if we're honest then we do have a question rise up and it's the question that's asked in verse 4 and this is a very important question for Bildad asks, how then can a mortal be righteous before God well if there is no answer to this then we are all condemned right we're all doomed but we know that there is an answer so we say praise the Lord that there is a way that we can stand righteous before God and it's because this is all about the gospel that God offers sinful people eternal life and we can step into that life and be a part of this epic story that God is unfolding right before our eyes in Scripture we see that he is delivering his people he's saving us you know Jew and Gentile male and female the offer is given to us that we can trust Jesus and so I just want to encourage you as you're looking at this text I want to remind you of a beautiful truth found in 2 Corinthians 5 21 where the Apostle Paul says that he made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf that we might become the righteousness of God in him I mean sometimes this is called the great exchange and that Jesus truly has delivered us and it's through his substitutionary atoning death on Calvary's cross and so as we are living life let's remember that we can trust the crucified risen Jesus and we can do so to God's glory and our joy well as we close our living life devotional today and we've taken a look at a very important question where Job is asked can a mortal be righteous before God I mean Bildad is asking that toward to Job and then Bildad goes on to say that you know when it comes down to it if you look at us I mean we're mortals but he says in the end that it's like we're like maggots or a worm and Bildad has this earthbound idea of who we are and that you know what's ahead for us is like death and decay well that doesn't sound very hopeful does it but I want you to know there actually is hope right and I love the way that uh, my church when we have the Lord's Supper and we are remembering that we can be righteous before God because of what Christ did for us on Calvary's cross that we always sing the song at the cross and we sing it in English and Spanish and the words go like this alas 
and did my Savior bleed, and did my Sovereign die? Would he devote that sacred head for such a worm as I? And then we sing and declare, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart was rolled away, it was there by faith that I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Let's pray. Well, Heavenly Father, we truly are thankful for the life that we have and to know that you offer us sinful people, eternal life, a life with you now and on into all eternity. So, Father, help us to trust you each step on our spiritual journey. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen.